One of the really interesting things about strength training is that our strength gains are joint angle specific. What this means is that the gains in strength that we achieve are largest at the joint angles that correspond to the points in the range of motion where our muscles produce the most force in training. So, for example, in the squat, our muscles produce the most force as we are turning around in the bottom position to come back up again. In a partial squat, that means the muscles are at relatively short lengths and the joint angles are relatively extended. Um, and in a uh, full squat, our muscles are much longer and our joint angles are relatively more flexed. And this means that if we do partial squat training for a period of time, our muscles, uh, our joints, our ability to produce force becomes greater at the more extended joint angles and the shorter muscle lengths. Whereas if we do a deeper squat uh, training program, then our muscles become stronger at longer lengths and at more flexed joint angle positions. Now, some people think that if you use a full range of motion, you're always training the muscle at all lengths uh, or joint angles. And while this might look true on the outside, it's not actually true on the inside because of the strength curve of the exercise. Now, if the strength curve of the exercise is very steep, that means that the muscle has to produce a lot of force at one joint angle or one muscle length, and not very much force at another joint angle or another muscle length. And um, when this happens, basically the, the muscle doesn't really get trained very effectively at the muscle length where the force production is low. And for example, in the squat, this happens quite normally, and the force production that's required of the muscle at the bottom of the lift is very high, whereas the force production that's required at the top of the lift is very low. And this is because of the leverage that the barbell has on the body throughout the course of the lift. At the bottom of the lift, the leverage of the barbell on the body is very good, so the barbell exerts a very large turning force on the joints, whereas at the top of the lift, the leverage of the barbell on the joints is very small, and so it exerts a very small turning force on the joints and therefore the lift is very easy. And this means that the muscles in the squat work very hard at the bottom of the lift and not so hard at the top. And this means that even when we do a full range of motion lift, the muscles aren't actually being trained effectively uh, all the way through the range of motion. So the leverage of the barbell can affect how hard an exercise is throughout its range of motion and therefore how much force we need to produce with our muscles at any given point in that range of motion. But there are also factors inside the body, inside the muscles, inside the central nervous system that affect how much force we can produce at any given point in the exercise range of motion. And these factors are very important to understand if we want to uh, appreciate how strength gains are joint angle specific after long-term training. So the main three factors that we need to be thinking about are the internal moment arm lengths of the muscle, the uh, length tension relationship or the, the force length relationship, and the changes in neural drive to the muscle with changing joint angle. And those, those three factors are the main three things that we need to be aware of when thinking about how uh, our ability to produce force changes with joint angle and also how our long-term strength gains become joint angle specific after training. Muscles produce turning forces at joints and the size of the turning force that a muscle can produce at a joint is determined by the amount of force it can produce and also by the leverage that it has. If a muscle has a very good leverage on a joint then it can produce a much higher turning force um, whereas if a muscle has worse leverage, then it'll produce only a small turning force. And the leverage that a muscle has is called the internal moment arm length. So if a muscle has a very long internal moment arm length, that means it has good leverage and produces a very high turning force. Now, this internal moment arm length of a muscle can change over the course of the exercise range of motion. In some muscles it changes a lot, and in some muscles it only changes a very tiny amount. And this means that the contribution of the muscle force to the joint turning force changes over that exercise range of motion. So when the muscle has a very good leverage, then it contributes a great deal to the muscle, to the joint turning force. 
whereas when the muscle has poor leverage it contributes much less to the joint turning force. And this can affect the overall turning force that we can produce any given joint angle range of motion. After long term strength training muscles increase in size, but they don't increase in size uniformly, they increase in size in some regions more than others. And these increases in size increase the internal momentum lengths of the muscle. That means they improve its leverage. So increases in muscle size don't only improve our ability to produce force by increasing the contractile properties of the muscle. They also increase its leverage and therefore improve our ability to produce turning force. Different regions of the same muscle have different amounts of leverage on the same joint at different joint angles. So one region of a muscle might be very good at producing a turning force at uh, one end of a, an exercise range of motion, while a different region of the same muscle might be much more effective at producing a turning force at the other end of the exercise range of motion. And this means that regional muscle growth, um, differences in muscle growth in different regions, can affect how much turning force that we can produce at any given point in an exercise range of motion. If one particular region of a muscle were to grow more than another, then that would change how much turning force we could produce in one specific exercise range of motion, and perhaps not really affect turning force in another part of the exercise range of motion. This is exactly what happens after long-term strength training. Muscles increase in size in some regions more than others, and this contributes to greater increases in strength in some joint angles compared to others. Now the interesting thing is that this effect is much more marked when training at very long muscle lengths, so when the joint angles are flexed. Um, and it is much less marked when we have been training at short muscle lengths or when the uh, joint angles are much more extended. So for example, we might expect this effect to be more of a contributor to joint angle specific strength gains after full squat training than after partial squat training. The second factor that contributes to our ability to produce a turning force at any given joint angle in an exercise range of motion is the length tension relationship. Now this relationship determines the amount of force or tension that a single muscle fibre can produce at any given working length. And the reason that muscle fibres change how much force they can produce depending on their length is because of the overlap between the actin and myosin myofilaments. These are the filaments that bind together to produce force. When the overlap between actin and myosin filaments is very high, the force that the single muscle fibre can produce is also high. When the overlap between the actin and myosin filaments is incomplete, then the muscle fibre produces less force. The amount of overlap between the actin and myosin filaments is determined by how much the sarcomere inside the muscle fibre is stretched. If the sarcomere is stretched at the optimal length, then the muscle fibre will produce a high force because it will have complete overlap between the actin and myosin myofilaments. If the sarcomere is not stretched to that optimal length, then there will be incomplete overlap between the actin and myosin myofilaments and therefore the muscle fibre won't produce as much force. As we move our muscles to exert force at different points in an exercise range of motion, we stretch the muscle, we therefore stretch the muscle fibres and we therefore stretch the sarcomeres. And this means that the length tension relationship affects how much force we can produce at any given point in an exercise range of motion by affecting how much force each individual muscle fibre can produce at that point in the exercise range of motion. After long-term strength training, we can increase the number of sarcomeres that are inside a muscle fibre. And what this means is that the operating length of each sarcomere in that chain of sarcomeres that make up the muscle fibre starts to become shorter for any given point in the exercise range of motion. And this means that the point in the exercise range of motion that that muscle fibre can produce the most force changes. And typically, after strength training with long muscle lengths, full ranges of motion or, or eccentric training, that point in the exercise range of motion tends to shift 
to longer muscle lengths, more flexed joint angle positions. So this is another way in which long-term strength training can affect um, where in a given joint angle range of motion we produce the most turning force and also produce joint angle specific strength gains. The size of the signal from the central nervous system to the muscle is a key factor that determines how much turning force we can produce. And the size of this signal from the central nervous system changes depending on the joint angle um, within the exercise range of motion. And it also increases differently at different points in an exercise range of motion after long-term strength training. And it tends to increase most in the ranges of motion that are loaded most strongly. So after partial squat training, the, we would expect um, the size of the signal from the central nervous system to increase most at short muscle lengths and at more extended joint angles, whereas at full, after full squat training we'd expect the size of the signal from the central nervous system to increase more at longer muscle lengths and at more flexed joint angles. The interesting thing is that the increase in the size of the signal from the central nervous system is much more important after training at short muscle lengths than it is after training at long muscle lengths. It affects joint angle specific strength gains much more after training at short muscle lengths than it does after training at long muscle lengths. In summary, regional muscle growth, a change in the number of sarcomeres and series inside the muscle fibres and an increase in the size of the signal from the central nervous system at a particular joint angle can all contribute to joint angle specific strength gains after long term strength training. The increase in regional muscle growth tends to be more important after training at long muscle lengths, more flexed joint angles in the squat, um, whereas um, the increase in the size of the signal from the central nervous system tends to be more important at short muscle lengths, so that would be more extended joint angles in the squat.